Now, one of the coolest things you can do on a jailbroken PS4 is install Linux. So in this video, that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to go through all the steps you need to get it installed. And of course, everything you're going to need, links will be in the description. But the end goal here is to get Steam games running on my PS4 Slim. So without further delay, let's dive in. So there's a few things you're going to need. Of course, you're going to need a jailbroken PS4. I'm using a PS4 Slim on 11.00, and then I've got one of those LookFox Mini Bs installed internally to do the jailbreaking for me. Now, it doesn't matter what method you use to jailbreak your PS4, as long as it's jailbroken. Click up here if you haven't actually jailbroken it yet. Watch that video. It goes through everything you need to actually get it jailbroken. You might also need a USB memory stick and I do say might because it depends what south bridge you've got because not all PS4s can have Linux installed internally on the hard drive and you might have to use a USB memory stick or in my case mine supports both so I've got the option. I would recommend installing it internally on the hard drive if that option is available to you because it's nice and easy. It doesn't affect anything else with the PS4 because it's a completely separate operating system that you would boot from the PS4 once you're in the normal PS4 software. So the first thing you want to do is head on over to the PS4 because we need to change some settings. We need to make sure you've got the right version of Gold Hen and we also need to find out what Southbridge version you have. But before we do that, I just want to give a massive shout out to PCBWay for being today's sponsor. Now I'm sure you all know who PCB Way are. You design your own circuit boards, you send them the files and they bring your ideas to life at really competitive prices. They don't only do circuit boards, they'll also 3D print your STL files. So let's take a look at it in action. As you know, I designed the LookFox Pico case. So let's drag and drop that STL file across and you can find this file on Thingiverse. Again, link in the description. We're going to set it to PLA and we want one. And then of course you can change the colors if you so wish. Then all we need to do is submit the request and then hit agree. And then what will happen is a member of the PCB Way team will have a look at your STL file, make sure there's no issues with it. And once they've approved it, you can then proceed to the checkout and order your print. So I just want to thank PCB Way for being today's sponsor. So as I said, we need to go on the PS4, go to settings and then go all the way down to the bottom to system and make sure there's not a tick in enable HDMI device link and also enable HDCP. Next, we're going to back out of that and go all the way up to sound and screen, video output settings, resolution, and you want to set this to 1080p. Next, we're going to go to RGB range and we're going to set this to full. Then if we go to HDR, we're going to want to change this from automatic to off. The same with deep color output, turn that off as well. Now, as you can see, the screen went black and that might happen for you. It will come back in a moment. So now we've got all that set, we're going to back out, back out again and go to system and system information. Now there's two things we need to check here. The first of which is that you're on the right version of Gold Hen. So you need to be on version 2.4B 17.3 or higher. So if you're watching this video in the future, as long as you're on a higher version than what I have here. And while you're here, you also want to make note of your Southbridge version. As you can see, I've got Belize. So I'll just make a note of that and that'll be more important later on when we're downloading Linux and getting the right files for our South Beach version. Now back on the home screen, go to Gold Hen and go to server settings because we want to turn on FTP and bin loader server. Right now we've got that done, we need to connect to your network. Now I'm going to use Wi-Fi, so I'm just going to go network, set up a connection use Wi-Fi, there's some settings already, click yes. Now we want to see a pop-up saying that that FTP server and that bin loader server is active. As you can see there, we've got it. We've got an IP address for both. 
Now, just a quick note here, if you are using a USB stick, you don't have to enable the FTP server. But as I'm doing an internal installation, we need to connect to the PS4 to send those files across. So moving over to the PC and we're on the PS4 Linux website. Again, link will be in the description. But if you scroll down, you're going to see all the distros. Now there's loads of these things, so it can be quite confusing what to choose. So we're going to choose this one here, Vidora 38 by DFAUS. So if you click on that link, it's going to take you to the main website. So if you scroll down a little bit, you're going to see some download links. And there's two things we need here. We need the main image file, which is 3.4 gigabytes. And of course, you've got a mega link and a media file link. So just choose which one's the fastest for you. And the next thing we need is the kernel and it has to be specifically for your Southbridge. And if you remember, mine was the BLIs. So I'm going to download this one and I'm going to download the main image. So I'm going to cut this bit out because there's pop ups and it's a pain. So let's go fast forward to the next and final download that we need. Again, there's a link in the description for the Intrum FS. And what you want to do is download this. It's only about 11 and a half megabytes, as you can see here. So that's the three downloads that we need. Now we're still on the PC, but I've opened FileZilla because we're going to FTP to the PS4. And if you remember, the IP address was 192.168.054. And the port number is 2121. Your IP address will be different for yours, but the port is always 2121. Right, we need to move these files across, but we need to create a folder. So if you go into user, then go into system, we're going to right click and create a directory. We're just going to call this boot. Go into the boot folder and then take that 3.4 gigabyte image file and just dump it across. So while that's copying across, we can get some other files ready. So if you open up the kernel, we need to extract this. So just go ahead and extract it and copy it to your desktop so you can find it later on. I don't know why it didn't copy the first time, but there we go. That's copied across now. So the next one, the Intrum FS, you're going to have a couple of different options here internal hard drive or external and then your different south bridges so i've gone for internal hard disk drive and then of course we picked our south bridge and then just copy that across to the desktop as well and there we go we've got those two across now as soon as this is finished copying we're going to drag those two files over to the same place in that boot folder that we created. So once you have those three files over on the PS4, what you can do is you can just close down FileZilla and now we're going to jump back over to the PS4. So you should be still connected to your network and obviously your PS4 will have internet. So go to your internet browser, start it up and you want to type this in the URL. ES7IN1.SITE and then hit go. Now it should bring you to this website here. So you're going to click on Chameleon. Once it's loaded, you're going to want to pick Linux VRAM payloads. It's the one on its own right at the bottom. And then you need to choose your version. So of course, we're on 11.00 and we want to choose the option with one gigabyte of VRAM just while we're setting it up. And then the next time you can use the two gigabyte of VRAM just so games run a lot better. So click on this and it's going to receive the payload. Now the screen will go black and you might get a no signal received from your TV or capture card. But just give it a few moments, it should come back to life and we should see some text at the top left of the screen. Now this is where having a USB keyboard is really handy. 
So we've zoomed right in so you can see a bit better. Now, if you're using the USB stick method, you're going to want to type in EXEC space install hyphen PSX IT ARCH dot SH. Now, of course, it failed because I'm actually doing the internal hard drive install. So if you're doing the internal hard drive install, this is what you need to type. EXE C space install hyphen Linux hyphen HDD dot SH. Then it's going to ask you how much storage space do you want to dedicate to your Linux install? Now I have a one terabyte SSD in my PS4, so I'm going to give it 240 gig. Now this is where it can take 10 to 30 minutes. It all depends on the PlayStation and how fast your hard drive is, whether it's an SSD or not, etc, etc. But this is going to take some time, so I'm going to skip all this until we get to the Linux login screen. So as you can see, we finally made it here to the login screen. Now the username for the version that we've used is PS4 and the password is PS4 Linux, all lowercase, no spaces. Now I'm not gonna go over how to use Linux in this video, it is out of the scope of what we're doing here today. But there's loads of videos on YouTube on how to use Linux and how to install things. But the main thing here is we already have Steam installed. So let's fire Steam up and see what games we can get running. So the first game we looked at was Counter-Strike Source. Now you need to set your expectations here because the PlayStation 4 is not some powerhouse of a technical marvel. It runs the games and they seem to run pretty well, but we're getting some screen tearing and a couple of slowdowns here and there. But you gotta remember, PlayStation 4s were never designed to play PC games. So the fact that it's actually running and it's playable is pretty impressive. And it's the same for Saints Row 2. I didn't actually think this game was gonna run. I've also played Half-Life 2, and I also had a quick go on Left 4 Dead 2. So it does seem like there's going to be quite a few games you can play here. So I'm going to have some fun seeing how far I can push it and what games I can get working and what games just flat out refuse to work. If you actually want to see a montage of a load of different games running on the PS4, let me know and I'll do that video ASAP because I don't want to show too much gameplay footage here because people kind of get bored with it. But if you want a dedicated video just so you can see how a bunch of games run, let me know and I'll get on it. So as you've seen, it's not quite the most difficult install in the world, but it can be a little bit tricky at times. But in summary, is it actually worth installing Linux on your PS4? Now for me, not really, because I have quite a few other computers and devices. Having Linux on the PS4 is it's a nice to have a play around and a mess around with, but it's not something that I'll be using going forward. But if you don't have a gaming PC and you want to play a couple of those old classics from Steam like Half-Life, etc., then it might be worth messing about with. And what you've got to remember as well is Linux isn't just for playing Steam games. You can do all sorts of stuff on there, even do college work, etc. Because at the end of the day, it is a full on operating system and there's so much you can do with Linux. So as I said before, definitely get yourself a keyboard and mouse. It's just going to make your life so much easier. Right, that about wraps it up for this video, but I got something funny for you. So let's hand over to Mr. Tickle and I'll catch you in the next one. Hi YouTube viewers. If you enjoy JP's content, don't forget to like, subscribe and give that bell a little tickle, 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 tickle so you don't miss any future uploads. Thank you. Thank you. Tickle. Thank you. Hi YouTube viewers. Hi YouTube viewers. Tickle. Subscribe. Content. If you enjoy JP's content, Tickle. Subscribe so you don't miss any future uploads.
Tiko Tiko content hi youtube viewers don't forget to tickle like subscribe thank you thank you tickle so you don't miss any future uploads thank you